Hello everyone and welcome to Box Office Receipts. I'm your host Tyler Callahan and we got a bit of news to talk about including the latest bomb at the box office with Amsterdam. Let's start with the domestic top five. Staying in first place is Smile with 17.6 million for a total of 49.9 million. Opening in second place is Lyle Lyle Crocodile with 11.5 million. In third place was Amsterdam with 6.5 million. Fourth place was The Woman King with 5.3 million for a total of 54.1 million. Lastly, in fifth place was Don't Worry Darling with 3.4 million for a total of 38.4 million. So, Smile continues to do great at the box office and is looking now to finish with at least $80 million domestic and possibly $100 million. Depends on the competition from Halloween ends, uh, but Paramount just keeps winning this year. Lyle Lyle Crocodile didn't do that great as a kid's movie uh, with just above $10 million. Not sure how much marketing Sony did for the movie, but the interest isn't there. As for Amsterdam, we have a reported budget of about $80 million. Uh, this had everything went wrong for the film, just did. Uh, you have some of the biggest names in Hollywood in one film, a fantastic ensemble, yet based on the reviews, their talents have been wasted and no one went out to watch the film. Once the bad reviews came out, that killed the movie. For a movie like this, people will be interested based on the cast, but they need to see if it's even good or not. The critics said no, it ain't. Depending on international numbers, this could still make around 30 40 million dollars worldwide but that would still be a decent loss at the box office for disney taking a look at china homecoming stayed in first place with 22.8 million for a total of 171.7 million and second place is ordinary hero with 2.2 million for a total now of 20.7 million Third place was Give Me Five with $1.76 million, with a total now of $64 million. And fourth place was Steel Will with another $1.4 million for a total of $9.7 million. Lastly, in fifth place was New Happy Dad and Son Five, My Alien Friend, with $960,000 for a total of $10 million. So yeah, Homecoming is doing great compared to its competition, but compared to this time last year, it's a big drop-off. Hopefully there are some big Chinese films coming out soon, because right now nothing new has been approved from Hollywood. For worldwide numbers, Smile made another $17.5 million for a worldwide total of $89.9 million. Word of mouth so far has been really good for the film, and it looks like it'll finish with at least $150 million worldwide. Amsterdam made $3.5 million for a worldwide opening weekend of $10 million, which is, well, uh, terrible. <laughs> the Avatar re-release made another $3.9 million for a total now of $71.9 million. Bullet Train earned another $1 million for a worldwide total of $238.2 million. DC League of Super Pets is at $198.5 million. And Top Gun Maverick is at $1.48 billion worldwide. We start off news in Hollywood on a sad note with Robbie Coltrane, sadly passing away. He was famously known for the role of Hagrid in the Harry Potter films. He was 72. Mr. Coltrane was really great as Hagrid in those films and loved watching him growing up and I was shocked when I heard the news. Rest in peace. We now move on to three new films in production. This one is an exclusive from Deadline and that is The Equalizer 3 is in the works. Denzel Washington is coming back with Anton Fuqua, set to, uh, set to direct. As for the rest of the cast, it will include Dakota Fanning and Gala Sosedero is set to come out September 1st, 2023. It's not surprising that Sony is moving ahead with a third film. This has become a series where it's consistent with its income. It does not make blockbuster level, but a good amount at the box office and I would assume solid numbers on VOD and licensing out to other companies. In another exclusive from Deadline, Paramount is looking to reboot the Naked Gun franchise. Right now, they are working on closing a deal for Liam Neeson to lead it. Along with that, Akiva Schaefer is set to direct with Doug Mand and Dan Greger writing the screenplay. While you might not have heard of Schaefer, he is one of the members of Lonely Island and has directed Hot Rod and Popstar. I think that Nielsen lead is a great choice if you're going to do a reboot. For this to work, though, it should be more deadpan comedy, and Liam Neeson can do that. Will the script be good? We shall see. 
We talked about this film before, but filming for it now is underway, and we know who else has joined the cast thanks to an exclusive from Deadline. I'm talking about The Beekeeper, an action thriller film starring Jason Statham and directed by David Ayer. As for who has joined the cast, that now includes Josh Hutchinson, Emmy Raver Lampman, and Jeremy Irons. That is a decent cast and has the makings to be a solid action film. No release date has been set for it yet. Paramount has announced that their film 80 for Brady will come out February 3rd, 2023, and will open up against Knock at the Cabin, so it will have a week before the Super Bowl, and they are smart to have it not released on Super Bowl weekend, as usually it is a quiet one at the box office. I feel for this to do decent numbers, it needs to highlight good jokes, and a lot of Tom Brady in the marketing, though based on the plot it seems like he'll only be in it 10, maybe 15 minutes tops. For Marvel Studios, the Blade issues have not only delayed it, but moved the entire schedule around. Rising Blade has been pushed back, no longer coming out next November, but will be released September 6th, 2024. That was the previous date of Deadpool 3, which has been pushed back to November 8th, 2024. That also had another cause of bumping Fantastic Four out of that spot, and will now come out February 14th, 2025. Also, the Avenger films opening six months apart is now over, with Avengers Secret Wars moving out of November 2025, and will kick off the 2026 summer movie season on May 5th, 2026. The Kang Dynasty will stay with its May 2025 release date. This was not a surprise, as with this many films in production, one delay could cause a cascading effect, and we saw that here. Personally, I like that Secret Wars was delayed. Avenger films are the perfect summer films, blockbusters, so to have it come out in November and less than a year from Kang Dynasty felt weird and rushed. I know people wanted it out as soon as possible, but that's how I feel. Small update for the upcoming Transformers film, Rise of the Beasts. Michelle Yeoh and Pete Davidson has joined the cast. They will be playing as some of the Transformers, so it'll be only voice work. Movie is still set to come out June of next year. As for another movie starring Pete Davidson, the Dumb Money movie about the GameStop stock now has a home, mostly. In an exclusive from Deadline, they are reporting that Sony has bought the rights to the film in a lot of territories. This includes the United States. India, Scandinavia, Eastern Europe, and Latin America. In total, it'll cost them around $20 million for the rights. With Sony being the big buyer, it looks like this will get some kind of theatrical release and will not go straight to streaming, which is nice to see. For Warner Brothers Discovery, let's start with the small stuff, which is basically Dune Part 2 is moving up slightly. It was set to come out November 17th next year, but instead will come out November 3rd. Smart move, considering it gives them more time to themselves before the films for Thanksgiving comes out. Now for the heavy stuff, which for Warner Brothers these days is basically more cuts. This time we got layoffs in two departments. First, an unknown amount of layoffs in the streaming marketing department, whose purpose is to advertise Warner Brothers shows on its own platforms. The other department is a lot bigger, and that is Warner Brothers TV. Overall, 26% of positions were cut across scripted, unscripted, and animation departments. Now the silver lining in this is that it was not all people losing jobs, some of the 26% includes positions that they are choosing not to fill. Still, this will not only put more work and stress on the people who are still there, and now everyone cut needs to find new jobs. Not a great situation. Hopefully, they are able to land on their feet quickly. We got word on Brad Pitt's production company Plan B, and it looks like they are looking to grow. They have hired Moles & Co., an investment bank to help in looking at options for investors. Right now, it is still in early stages, with the options being just a simple investment to help grow the company to an outright sale of it. Personally, I hope that they do not sell and just get the investments they need to grow. They have produced a lot of good films over the years, and I prefer to keep, I prefer them to keep doing what they're doing now. If anyone has to buy them, though, uh, I'd say Apple would be the best. But at this stage, it's too early to tell what their options are. Neon is also looking to grow, as it has been reported that they have new credit from Commercia Bank, which will be used to increase their production slate. Should be noted, this is separate from Neon is still looking to sell as well, so it seems like they do not want to wait on that and will use this credit to expand in the meantime. In a small update to the Netflix deal with theater owners that has now expanded to the UK, Netflix has made deals with Vu and Cineworld to play Glass Onion in UK theaters. The dates will be the same as in America and in Canada from November 23rd to the 29th. For Vu, they are also working with Netflix right now to work out a deal to add theaters in Germany and Italy as well. Really is a shame we are not going to see box office numbers on this. Finally, we got the first trailer for the House Party remake from Warner Brothers. It was set to come out in December. It was set to come out in December, 
but has now been pushed back a month and will come out January 13th. I take it it did not want to risk being counter-programming to Avatar. Uh, basically, at this point, for movies over the holiday se season, it's going to be Avatar for everyone, Puss in Boots for families, Babylon for adults, and then Oscar contenders and leftover films from the fall like Black Panther. We start off VOD Premium with Amazon. Deadline has an exclusive on a casting update for one of their bigger upcoming films, Red One. Lucy Liu has joined the cast, which has Dwayne Johnson. Lucy Liu has joined the cast, which has Dwayne Johnson and Chris Evans as the leads. Not much else is known about it other than it is a globe-trotting holiday film, so it's a good casting choice. But for me, at this point, I just want to hear what the movie itself is about. When is it coming out? What is it actually about? You know, all that good stuff. We also have another casting update from Deadline, and that is for The Gorge with Anna Taylor Joy joining. She will lead the film with Miles Teller for what is being called a genre-bending love story. Along with this, we now know who will be distributing it. All we knew before was that Skydance was producing the film, but Apple has joined in and will be distributing it. Not clear how much they paid for it, depending on how genre-bending it is. I'd like to see this in theaters. But who knows, maybe Apple will start expanding their theatrical business. Roku is expanding their business by getting more into smart home devices. In a partnership with Waze Labs, they are releasing new smart home devices, including video doorbells, smart light bulbs, and security cameras. To access the footage from your doorbell or cameras, users will be able to view it from their Roku device connected to a TV or from a new app they are releasing on both iOS and Android. If you are interested in buying any of their new hardware, you can only get it from Roku directly online or Walmart either in store or online. So this is not really related to streaming, but with Roku being a big part in delivering streaming services to customers, I thought it was worth a mention. Uh, will it be successful? Maybe. It's too early to tell, but I do think it's smart they're trying to expand and grow their business. If they reach a point down the road in stagnation in regards to their streaming devices, how will they grow? Shareholders would not be happy to hear that they have no new ideas. So them trying to build that up now, along with getting more content for the Roku channel, you know, being a distributor themselves for that, uh, seems like the smartest moves. We finish up with Netflix, where they have announced the details of their ad-supported tier. The cost for it will be $6.99 per month. That will get customers most, but not all, of the content at, from Netflix at 720p resolution. As for the amount of ads, they're saying it'll average to around 4 to 5 minutes per hour. Besides some expectations where ads will be shown altogether at the beginning, shows and films will have ads throughout watching it. Also, customers will not be able to download anything to their devices for offline viewing. It's not clear how many concurrent streams are included, if any. As for when it comes out, Mexico and Canada will get it first on November 1st. Then on November 3rd, it will go live in America, France, Germany, UK, Brazil, Australia, and Japan. So for me, as someone who will not be getting this, uh, wasn't going to anyway, the price is solid. Everything else is kind of shit. Not offering downloads I think is fair, as it should be a perk for people who pay more. But 720p? Really? In 2022, that's, that's still being offered? That should be 1080p, no question. Also not a fan of having ad breaks during a film, would much prefer just a long ad roll at the beginning. I don't see a lot of people switching down to the ad supported tier just yet, uh, depends on how much content they're able to watch. I also don't think the low resolution will bother people, that's just something that sticks out to me as being really cheap. In other Netflix news, they are now joining the BARB, or Broadcasters Audience Research Board for the UK. Basically they are the Nielsen ratings for the UK, and with Netflix joining starting in November, the bar will start reporting more details about their viewership numbers. This is a big deal, as it is the first major independent ratings board to have a full working relationship with Netflix in getting the data they need to analyze the viewership numbers. No word yet on if they will be working more with Nielsen in America or any other boards around the world. As for why they might be doing this, I think it's two reasons. First is this has been a complaint against Netflix for a while, and with this step, it can start to shut people up on it. The second, and I think more important, Reason for them is advertisers. Advertisers use viewership numbers to work out deals on prices for their ads, depending on when they show them. If Netflix wants to get all the advertisers they can, they need to open up their books a bit more. Just pointing to their top 10 site and saying, trust me, bro, ain't going to cut it. I'm curious as to how some of the numbers will be for their upcoming content. And that'll be it for this episode of Box Office Receipts. Thank you for listening, and see you next time.